we need to move depending on our body. And so that's really what I'm trying to provide people is access back into understanding their own body so they can go off and do whatever they want outside of that and feel so much better within their body. Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today, I have a different guest than I normally have on. We're going to be talking about some TMI things. So get ready, ladies. We're going to be talking all things pelvic floor and pain. You know, I was talking with Jen earlier and I sit down so much that now I'm starting to get like lower back pain and I'm feeling like aches and sores like in places I shouldn't have at 36 years old. But I knew I had to have the founder of the newest platform and app called Jen.Health. She brings a unique whole body approach to strength, mobility, and pain-free living. Jen has been named one of the top 50 most influential healthcare professionals. She's a physical therapist by trade, but she's created this online empire helping people become pain free. So today you guys are in for a special treat because I have Jen Frabone on the (laughs) podcast. I love it. (laughs) I had to land it, you know? (laughs) You did. (laughs) Okay. So you recently also just got married about two years ago. Mm -hmm. You just had a baby Mm -hmm. nine months ago. And so you're bringing so much of your expertise of just like mobility and now teaching also moms, like you realize how much your body changes after you have one kid and then you got like multiple kids on top of that. I don't even know if my cervix is in the right place. I have no (laughs) idea. I hope it is. But I'm really excited to have you on because I've watched you from really afar for a long time. You're so consistent. You're one of the most consistent people I've watched. I mean, for years you've been, this is your thing, mobility. And you've been, you know, preaching it to the choir. And I think when I met you like five or six years ago, I didn't, I didn't have a need for mobility. I didn't think I did. And now I like take it for like, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is gold, everything she's teaching. So thank you for what you're putting out into the world. Well, thank you for appreciating it. How and did you like come out of the womb and say, I want to be a physical therapist? I did not. I had no (laughs) idea what I wanted to to do, but really it was movement in general is what inspired me and kind of like captivated mm-hmm. me. I always growing up, my parents required that we were in a sport, which I'm super grateful for. I learned a ton that. from. I love your parents. <laughs> and I just the only thing that interests me going into college was movement and the body. So I did mm-hmm. kinesiology and I still didn't know what I wanted to do after that. And so that's when I interned at a physical therapy office. I loved, you know, just watching how a physical therapist could feel movement or watch movement. I'm like, what are they watching for? What are they feeling for? And so it just continued to say, okay, what what else could I do? What else could I help with for the body? And I just decided physical therapy was the thing, even though I didn't really like school that much. But I was like, all right, here we go. Doctorate degree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to become a doctor, even though I hate school. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you found yourself in it because you were fascinated by it. And I think that's really important for people that are listening in right now is whatever is fascinating you, whatever catches your eye, like pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Because most of us, like we, we want to like downgrade those like desires that we start to have those little reminders of part. That's your purpose, right? Like that movement is your purpose and teaching people how to have it in a healthy way. (laughs) I hope so. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I taught Pilates for a long time as I continued to go through school. And I just I loved saying, OK, I can modify around pain. I can modify around what they have going on. But why and what else mm. is happening? And I was coaching gymnastics as well, can tape an ankle, can do all these things. But but why is that? And is that really helping? And so it was just those continued you know, really wanting to dive into the why and understand it for myself so that I could understand it for other people. And Mm. that never ends. Like there is still a constant why going on in my head Yeah. (laughs) as to what else can I learn? What else could I do? What else is out there? And kind of, you know, always going back to my own beliefs of things and saying, well, is that true still for me? And Mm. is that true for how I'm helping other people? And, you know, continuing to reevaluate things. Okay. So, you're pointing out something so important right now is like the quality of the questions you ask yourself Mm -hmm. determines the quality of your life. So evaluating the beliefs you hold today 
are they still the ones that, you know, you want to keep with you for the next five years? Right. And that goes with not just like movement and mobility. Yeah. What else does it go for? I mean, and that's what's funny. It's like, I feel like when I started blowing up on social media, you can't control to a degree what is happening Mm -hmm. with that. Something's going to click. Something's going to take off. And it was mobility for me. I was posting everything, though. I was posting strength, corrective exercises, like skill, different things. But it was the mobility that people really grabbed onto. And so Mm -hmm. that was the first kind of product that I put out on the market. And it really worked and people really liked it. And still, that's like the one thing that I'm known for, even though it's like it's evolved so much. I know. I talk about so many things, but that is still what people want. So it's like, okay, how can within what I'm providing, what people know and want, how could I expand so that they can get other tools as well that Mm. I that I truly believe can be so helpful and beneficial? So how could I give them what they're wanting and then show them there's so much more. Mm -hmm. When you like survey your audience, what is the number one, like, I guess, reason why somebody continues to follow you? They might have found you because of mobility, but why is it that they continue to follow you? Well, now it's my son. (laughs) Oh, I know. He's so cute. (laughs) Um, You know, I think it's they appreciate the quality of the content and the consistency. I do believe the consistency builds trust in people. And I really try to show up for people. So mm-hmm. if if I'm providing a course, and usually my courses are pretty dang cheap, I'm going to say, OK, if you're going to be in here, you can ask me any questions. Like, drop into my DMs. Email me. I want to make sure that you have support. I want to make sure that you're taken care of. And so I do my best to show up for people who are going to show up for their own body. Oh, Because wow. it's so different now as a physical therapist thinking that I was always going to be working in person with people mm-hmm. to now be doing it from afar. So how can I still impact people in the same way who are now going to take the time to say, I'm going to do this for myself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like really caring Mm -hmm. about the results that people are getting. You don't want people to just consume the content. You want them to actually take action on what you're teaching them. Yes. That's what every coach desires, right? Everything. (laughs) Listen, please. (laughs) The other day you were doing a squat and like you showed the right way to do a squat or uh-huh. something like that, like tuck your pelvis and all this stuff. I was trying to do it. I still can't do it. You're gonna have to help me after this <laughs> podcast. I don't know why. Like, I mean, all these years I've been trying to squat and I still just I suck at it, but it's fine. Okay. So you got married and you were just telling me the story before we got started, yeah. how he was doing his own thing, building out his PT practice, but you're blowing up on social media and you guys decide that, Hey, Let's like double trouble over here. Let's come together and utilize each other's strengths. So you guys work together full time. We do. You're living together, have a baby. You're doing 24-7 life <laughs> together. How how does that work out? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I met this human Aww. in the first place. Like, it's just so amazing to be able to do life with him because we're Our values in what we believe and what we do and what we want to create is so similar, but how we get there is different, which Mm -hmm. is is where it works. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, because he's from Minnesota. We met at like a random little PT conference that I was speaking at. Like, I just didn't expect to meet anyone. Wow. And then he moved to California and here we are. (laughs) Okay, wait, did he move to California for you? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. The story just got better. (laughs) This is so cute. Wait, so he's like in the audience listening to you. And then he's like, I want to meet her and I want to marry her. And then you guys get married. (laughs) I don't know how it happened. We went, well, actually, I didn't speak yet. I came in on a Friday night and everyone was going out. And I was so tired because I just came from traffic and conversion. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Yeah. So different. So I came from that and I was going to a PT conference. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't even want to be here. It's probably going to be old PTs. (laughs) She wasn't. And I ended up going, everyone and went out dancing because it was Austin, Texas. And I was oh, yeah, love dancing. dancing. I was so, I was like tired. But as soon as you step out on the street and you hear the music, I'm like, mm, I'm going to go <laughs> dancing. And that's actually where we met. Oh, was wow. on the dance floor and oh. having that same energy of like not caring who's looking and being able to put yourself out there, not needing a drink. Like who cares? We're dancing. Mm-hmm. We're having fun. So already our energy is kind of like matched yeah in that way Mm -hmm. and then once we started talking about how we treat and what we see in a person and how we're looking more at 
more at holistically at like who are you and what's going on in your life yeah that could be contributing to this pain rather than what's happening at your shoulder joint and how do we need to manipulate the shoulder joint itself but what is happening at a whole value who are you what stressors do you have what's impacting you what are you doing on your day-to-day basis that could be contributing to what you're feeling within your Mm -hmm. body and what and hearing him talk about that I was like wait you do breath work and you do all this stuff and that you know it was just like there's so many similarities that kept coming up and then once COVID hit and we weren't married yet but he kept saying you have 300 emails you're just ignoring because you don't have the capacity to get to it let me just go in and and filter it for you let me just see and so I'm like oh Okay. I was like so hesitant. I'm like, here's my partner. Everything's going great. Yeah, but like, you didn't what mess if, it up. yeah, what mm-hmm. if something is just not great here? And so he, and then he just started organizing all this back end stuff that I never had. And then bringing on new team members that we need. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just been an incredible asset that's allowed us to do what we're doing now, having a whole new app and platform that we've built from scratch with developers and creating something that I've never been able to have before and bringing that exactly what people have been asking me for that I don't believe is out there and doing it in our own way. It's been really incredible to have a partner to do that with. That's I'm so excited for you. I need to go download the app <laughs> it's right cr- now. It's a good app. Okay, so There's yeah, lots of free stuff on there too. Okay? Tell me about <laughs> the app. Like why, why did you decide to create one? Because some like people that are in the you know, fitness world, yeah. they just go and use Trainerize. Of or whatever, course. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So White what label ma- an app. Yeah. Which is much easier. Go do that. I know. So I'm like, why would you do that? I love it though. Yeah. So because I didn't want to be just fitness, I want other people to have their fitness outlet and be able to come to me and say, here's what I'm doing in addition to my workout where it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be an hour of yoga, an hour of stretching. It's, It's pinpointed, directed things that you're probably neglecting within your body that take five to 10 minutes to do. Mm. And if you just start sprinkling that in on a daily basis, the things that your body is neglecting, you're going to feel so much better in any workout that you go do. Mm. And though we have workouts on our plan, it's more of like, here's how you can learn how to properly do these things. So when you go into a, a... Yes, uh, you know, whatever workout you you mm-hmm. want to go into, you have me in your head a little bit <laughs> where I'm kind of like telling you, here's what to look for in your body. Here's to adjust for your individual body. I think also when we go into and I was this way, I was a Pilates instructor who didn't know a lot. So I would say the cues based on what I thought everyone should be following. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you start to really work with an individual, it depends. <laughs> we all have different lengths of our femur of our legs. We have different hip shapes. So not everyone should have feet facing forward or knees not going over toes or, you know, we need to move depending on our body. And so that's really what I'm trying to provide people is access back into understanding their own body so they can go off and do whatever they yeah. want outside of that and feel so much better within their body. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm going to go download this app immediately. <laughs> Everybody listening in needs to. So you have the app and then you've also built out other courses and different Mm -hmm. programs that you've been selling for quite some time. Yeah. And that whole world, we're not going to get into because we could really like get into the weeds of it, but you have to have a passion for teaching people. Yeah. So not only a passion for the content, right. And the fascination with body movement, but you have to like, honestly love to teach. Where do you think that comes from? That's interesting. You know, I don't know. I mean, I can say my mom and my sister are both teachers, Aww. like actual teachers. <laughs> and so maybe that the education piece just comes out of me. But I I think being a great physical therapist in general, and even if you're working one on one with someone, you have to be a good teacher mm-hmm. because if you're just telling someone what to do, but they don't understand why they're doing it or how it's going to impact their body why would they continue it? We right. have so much going on in our lives. We don't have time to add things in. So if if you're just handing someone a sheet and saying, here, do these exercises, but it's not explained why that's going to be beneficial, they might try it for a little. If they don't feel any change, they're not going to continue it. Right. So my goal is to, again, like how can I unlock what you feel within your body so that you start to understand it on a deeper level and add aspects in? It's not always going to be perfect. And this is what I tell people. Like <laughs> there's no perfect plan of like, I'm going to do this every day and it's always going to be this way. Mm -hmm. Life changes and we're going to go through phases. And if you come in and out, great. Like I didn't work out for like three weeks the other day, the other day. (laughs) (laughs) 
after we were traveling and life is just crazy and I was tired and now I'm back in it. And mm -hmm. it's just like you choose again. You choose like, how am I going to get back into mobility? How am I going to choose to understand my core? How am I going to choose to take time? And it's just about choosing again. And so I want to help people be able to have the tools to choose again mm -hmm. and to understand their body in a deeper way. Okay. The way that you're saying that, the choose again, I love the way that you're framing that because so often we get out of a routine or we just get in a bad habit. Yeah. We were never in a good routine in the first place. And there's so much shame that comes. So much. With that, that sometimes then you just continue to spiral. Well, I haven't worked out for three weeks. So right. you know what? I, it's already, I'm already three shoots to the wind. So I'm just going to give up now. Right. What can somebody do to get that choose again mentality? I mean, if we continue to focus on what we didn't do, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to never accomplish what we actually want to do. The mm -hmm. only thing we can say is today is a new day. And what is one thing that I can choose that's a little different than what I did yesterday or what I did last week? So maybe it's I'm not going to do a full workout, but I'm going to go walk, you know, 40 minutes and take the stroller out with my kid and we're going to go on a walk mm -hmm. where maybe it's not a full workout, but I'm still getting movement. in, so I feel a little bit better than I did the day before. And it's what can I choose in this moment that looks a little bit different? Mm -hmm. Maybe instead of starting with coffee, I'm going to choose to have a drink of water first, even if it's just a sip. And then I'm going to start with my coffee. Yeah. You know, so how can I choose these small little things that are just going to maybe change the way that I'm feeling and change the perception of my body and knowing that every day I have a chance to choose again? Mm. And it is stepping bravely into that. It is knowing that you have no control and you don't know what next day is going to bring, but I'm going to choose something maybe a little bit different. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. And we always have the power to choose something different. Always. That's what we own. We mm -hmm. can't control the external circumstances, but we can control how we show up in that way. Wow. So we talked before we got started. We were talking a lot. And I was like, I'm doing my Kegels right now. <laughs> and you're like, stop. And I'm like, wait, why? I thought I was supposed to. I, why are Kegels like bad? And it's not bad. Okay. So I don't want to say that. <laughs> but it's also like, do we need to be tensing something where we're starting, where we're needing to relax? Oh. If, you're, if you're sitting and you're supposed to be supported and sitting, then sit and allow yourself to be supported. That's like, why would I just sit here and do like a million <laughs> pumps of my bicep? <laughs> <laughs> right? I might do something like that. I'm like, it's burning calories. <laughs> but like I all I'm doing is especially at end range of motion, I'm just kind of contracting, contracting, oh, contracting. Yeah. And that's not helping my arm get full range of motion yes. or get strong if I'm just kind of trying to contract at the end range, which is what we usually are doing with kegels. We're just trying to pull up and up and up and mm -hmm. up. And we're doing these short little you know, lifts, which we, we hope is what it's doing. Also, you don't know. If you haven't seen a pelvic floor <laughs> physical therapist, we don't know if we're bearing down. We don't know if we're pushing out. We don't know if we're pulling up. We don't know. Oh, my God. Which is why I encourage every woman, whether you've had a baby or not, go see a pelvic floor specialist. You don't have to have any symptoms. But did they, like, stick their hand up the... You don't have to. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. But that's really what you're going to the therapist for. I mean, you have muscles within your pelvic floor. Yeah. They're so helping they're to support your there. organs. So they're assessing just like you would with I your would back. freak out. I, it's already making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Okay, great. We don't need to do that then. There's so many other things you could do that don't have to go internal. But just like your, your pelvic floor is that base of muscles that make up our core. Mm -hmm. So it's it's part of our trunk, just where we have our rib cage and our diaphragm. That is going to move every breath that we take. And so our pelvic floor should reflexively kind of be moving with that. And so if I take a breath in and my and I contract and my diaphragm drops, my pelvic floor should actually lengthen and drop a little bit without thinking about it, okay. without doing anything. And then I relax and I exhale and my pelvic floor should reflexively lift with that. And it's working every time we step, every time we do something without Again, without having to think about, think it. about it. And so sometimes when we're consciously like, oh, I got to do my kegels and I need to strengthen. How do we know that we're not strengthening on top of something that's already too tight? Especially if you're stressed out in your life, if you've got jaw tightness. Oh, you, that's me. If you grind your teeth, if you... You might notice, ask your partner too. This is a this is an interesting one. If I'm text chase <laughs> right now. If when you're like doing the dishes or... Um, brushing your teeth, if they, if you can see like you, they're kind of glute clenching, 
you can look at your partner too. I mean, everyone yeah. has a pelvic floor. If they're kind of squeezing their glutes and you can kind of see like within their sweats or their pants that they're wearing that there's like a little crease, you know, they're they're holding too much tension where oh. it doesn't need to be. Right. Okay. And or women, we've been told to suck in our stomachs yes. all the time. Yes. That is also putting too much pressure down onto our pelvic floor. We need to be able to breathe and relax. And as I'm wearing super tight pants because <laughs> I haven't worn these postpartum yet. Um, you look great. <laughs> thank you. But, you know, it's I starting to identify where am I holding too much tension within mm -hmm. my body? I'm probably maybe holding too much tension down into my pelvic floor and I need to do more relaxation exercises prior to thinking about strengthening. And when okay. I do strengthen, your pelvic floor should kind of reflexively, again, help to coordinate with that entire core. So if I can understand how to use my breath, how to use my diaphragm, how to use my entire core with my pelvic floor, then it will contract when I do a squat, when I do, when I go run, when I do other things without necessarily having to force it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a relearning of how to use your breath with your system and how to like kind of realign everything so it feels a little bit better in conjunction with your body. Our bodies are so fascinating. They really are. Like the way that you're explaining it, I'm like, wow. And it's making me realize that I think most of us, and I know I do this all the time, where, I mean, I just don't even think about it because I'm just moving yeah. so fast yeah. that I'm like, whoa, like, I I don't know if I butt clench. I need to check yeah. that and ask Chase that. <laughs> See if I, I probably do. Anyways, but something that I've been doing recently is I go to a chiropractor down here and I feel like I call him Miracle Hands because he's, a, probably, you would love him. I probably got to introduce you guys because he's very holistic. Mm -hmm. Like he won't just adjust you everywhere. He'll mm -hmm. be like, where's it at? And then he'll do something. He's like, how stressed are you? Mm -hmm. And how often are you breathing? And it's like going to him, it makes me slow down for a little bit and go, okay. And he gave me this um little back, like it's like a lumbar thing that I lay on every mm -hmm. night to like reteach my lumbar spine to curve. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? I mean, all of these devices are just to put us in a different position than yes. we usually are. So if That's, you're yep. sitting all day long, how can you get in a different position? You could do that by laying on your stomach and propping up on your elbows. Well, I do something <laughs> that you tell me to do. And it's, I do this one where I'm out here, like the child's pose oh, thing. Yeah. Um, but you, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. We should have made this an interactive one. <laughs> I just should have had my like yoga pants on and made uh, you move me. I mean, really, my Instagram is glittered with it. You I know. I know. Well, see, that's everything. what I do. I'll go, okay, I need to go to Jen's page and give me a stretch right now. My back's hurting. But I want to point out that that's not normal, that a lot of us are all in so much pain. It's because we're living yeah. lives that are really not like conducive to the way our bodies were designed. Yeah. I so mean, people. especially if you're an entrepreneur, it's 24 seven. Mm -hmm. You know, most people know that. And it is, it's all consuming within your mind because it's all on you. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not 24 seven, you carve out time, you're doing other things, but it's still kind of there yeah. in the background. You know, you're still thinking about the things you, you got to do. You can't ever completely check out. You can't, you know, it's on you. So it's, it's what, what can I do? You have to voluntarily add in de-stressing practices yes. in order to help your body and help your mind. You know, it's all connected. We're not feeling pain unless our brain is registering it. And if it is constant and chronic or reoccurring and consistent, it's usually not the tissues itself that are damaged or bad. It's that our brain is registering the stress within our body. And oh, this wow. is where we're feeling it. So, and if there are moments when you can forget about the pain, where you don't have pain, you go on vacation all of a sudden and everything feels so much better. That, that is another prime example that it's not a tissue damage. It's not that your hips are out of alignment or something is wrong with you. It's that we're, <laughs> we're living in a state that we're telling our brain it is just it's being over consumed. Mm -hmm. So we need to develop practices that help to downregulate it. And that's the, the stuff that's not so sexy on social media. Mm -hmm. Like just let me tell you how to breathe and use your diaphragm and and you're going to feel so much better. But I'm telling you, when I get people on the table who've had back pain for five years and 
they're breathing differently because they're now de- down regulating within their system and they start crying because there's no more back pain. Mm. Like that's the stuff that doesn't have to be look super sexy and take so much so much time, but can be so impactful in how someone feels within their body. Wow. What does de-stressing look like for you now that you're a new mom? <laughs> Really support, getting support and taking the time for me that I need to. So if I do need to go on a walk, I go on a walk. If I do need to work out, my husband takes the baby and I go do my workout. I see friends when I need to. I sleep in a little bit more and he takes the baby. Like We're lucky enough to be able to do that, right, because we work for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of pass back and forth. Plus, I have my mom that literally lives three minutes away and helps out during the week. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Okay. Okay. I was going to ask how close your family was. Yeah. So she's been an amazing help for us, which is I'm so grateful for. You know, we have the ability to do that, but how can you ask for support so that you can have some time for yourself? I think that's so crucial and it shouldn't be, you know, having to find time for yourself to work out, to go walk, to go do something that's good for your mental health and your physical health, Mm -hmm. you know? It, it's hard because I think for a lot of people, they're trying to scratch their brain and say, when can I find the time? Mm-hmm. And there's always a way. You have to make the time. You do. You have to make yourself a priority. You do. And was it hard for you to receive the help, receive the support? You know, I think since being in this relationship, I have learned to receive support a lot more. So I would say it, my husband in general has helped me to be able to do that. Do you think that's because like maybe your previous relationships, you didn't feel as safe or? Yeah. And I I just felt like if I asked, I'd be a burden Mm. and I don't feel like a burden anymore. I feel like I have a partner who sees like, oh, this is really going to benefit or this is really going to help. Right. So I don't feel I feel like He could be my support. I could be his. Like he goes and plays pickleball almost every day and, you know, has the time to do that. And so there's space for both of us to have our mental outlets Mm -hmm. in order to feel good within our own body. Mm -hmm. Now, when you guys moved to your new location, Mm -hmm. was it hard for you to find community or did you already have community there? I don't have a community there. Oh, wow. (laughs) Okay. So how? Yeah. Okay. So you have to drive to L.A.? To see Sometimes I do still have like my LA crew, although I'm the only mom in that LA crew right now. Okay. So, so that's it's different. Oh, very different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just don't understand until you're in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have actually a few mom friends that I grew up with near the area. So where I grew up is about 20 minutes from where we live. So okay. it's super close in order to still be able to see some of some key people and have those relationships with babies that are about the same age. So, oh, good. Yeah. Good. I feel like community is like so key, especially like coming into motherhood and Mm -hmm. and like, you know, entrepreneur, that community is like one thing and it's great. You need that as well. But then when you're in momhood, it's like, is this normal? Is what? Like, it's nice to be surrounded by people who are going through similar things at at the same time, because I could tell you, oh, yeah, that's it. But I'm like, I'm long past that. I know. Time. You're in a different stage. I've already I I mean, I have (laughs) blocked that out of my mindset. (laughs) Chase got a vasectomy, you know, like (laughs) it is past anyways. But it's nice. It's I think it's really important for people to have that. So are you going to try to find? I am. I'm still going to. I tried one mom group that I'm like, eh. I do still want the similar Why don't you mindset. Host the mom group. I should see like it, and because yeah, I couldn't do the normal mom thing. Either I know because I'm not like a normal mom. You're not a normal I mom know. at all. Like you're yeah, you got to host it, and then you'll attract in right those like minded people. Right, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of looking for. I mean, even my sister was like, "Oh, go to a stroller strides because they're active." Yes. And so they're similar, and I'm like, I went to a stroller strides with you, and there was a mom who said, "Oh, I feel like I have to." go to the bathroom. I'm leaking. And everyone said, oh, that's normal. That's fine. But no one provided help. And I was besides myself. (laughs) I was like, excuse me, common doesn't have to mean normal. Mm -hmm. And if we're in this group and everyone's exercising, so anyone listening, leaking after childbirth and childbearing doesn't have to be normal. It might still happen, but there's so much help that you can get from pelvic floor therapists so that 
that doesn't have I to be I wish I would have known about that. I had no idea that was even a thing. Yeah. Until like recently. I had no, I, I had so many issues after all three. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Because there's that no support. I mean, how do you go through birth and mm-hmm. then you get one six week follow up? And then nothing else. Most people tear, most people, or you have a cesarean where you have a major abdominal surgery, but yet you get like a rotator cuff repair on your <laughs> shoulder or a knee like scope on your knee and you get physical therapy. And then nobody tells you how to deal with it. I remember with my first one, I had a, I think they call it a stage four tear. Like it goes all the way up. Oh yeah. And, and you got no nothing. physical therapy. Ah, nothing. Makes my heart hurt. Just go, go back to life, girl. And I'm like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For a while. Oh my gosh. How was your birth? Like, what was your birth story like? Oh, that was a journey. Um, I actually ended up with a cesarean, which I never Aww. thought would happen. Yeah. But birth- thank God that they have that type yes, of technology, right? I know. I'm very grateful. I birthed at home or I labored at home for about 26 hours. <laughs> before not moving from five centimeters and I was like okay yeah we need to go in (laughs) something's not working (laughs) he doesn't want to come out it was 42 weeks as well oh my gosh I know so you were really really didn't want to come out my first one was 42 weeks too yeah and I which is common yeah and I think um you're really you really tried to make it happen I did 26 hours I did so what was the reason for it not progressing Honestly, no idea. There, my midwife said that when she swept around my cervix, she could feel something, it was either scar tissue or pull up or something, but she didn't want to really go into that because when she swept it, it bled a little bit. And okay. so she was afraid of doing that at home too much. And the nurse actually felt the same thing when I went in. But OBs say that when if there's scar tissue, the pressure of the baby pushing on the cervix should break through it anyways, and that, that wouldn't hold it back. So. The, I wonder all if it they was can from say, the miscarriage. I know, which I did have a DNC. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows why it didn't happen? I have uh, I actually have very tight hips. I could do splits and stuff, but put me in a butterfly and my knees are super high. So I'm like, well, maybe my hips don't open oh, enough yeah, the way yeah. that they should. I don't know. There's so many. There's yeah. There's a mystery to birth that we will never know. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it's another lesson of like, I cannot control the outcome. And this is what happened and I I did feel very supported along the whole journey I felt like I was making the decisions based on my knowledge and what I knew and Mm -hmm. so going into the cesarean I did have a moment of let me mourn this for a second because I didn't think this was going to be my outcome okay let's do it and that was what got me healthy myself healthy baby and I've had a great recovery after and so we're doing good well and too now you're able to take your own personalized experience and help mm-hmm. so many women who have had cesareans and they have, have such a harder time recovering than, right? Am I right? D- it depends. It all depends. And I will say, I don't feel like I had a super hard recovery because of the work that I did before and during pregnancy. Mm-hmm. I worked up all the way until I was about to deliver because that's what felt good within my body and I could. And I understand that's not always possible for every person. Right. But if you can, lift the weight, get strong, support your body, because the work that you got to do once that baby comes is not easy. You're mm-hmm. bending over, you're getting down. You know, people come to me and they're like, oh, every time I put my, cri- my, my kid down in the crib and get them up, I'm in pain, my back hurts. And I say, how much are you doing deadlifts? If you're not lifting stuff in the gym, how do you expect to lift things in life and feel okay? Mm-hmm. Like we need the mobility to set the the plate and then we need the strength to build the resiliency okay oh man I was just thinking my I need to go do some deadlifts um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worked out all week so I have to choose again tomorrow that there I'm gonna go. go work out there you go you know <laughs> okay so where do you see yourself in the next year I just really hope that we can continue to help as many people as we can come find the platform and come in and try. Just try something different. Try something new on for your body. Mm -hmm. We have 11 different plans on the platform, each with multiple phases. And my goal is not to take more than 10 minutes of your time, five to 10 minutes. That's all I want (laughs) in order to help start to develop a new pattern, a new way of feeling within your body. 
You know, there's never one perfect exercise. I can't sit here and say, oh, you have back pain, you should be doing this. It mm-hmm. depends on what you need for your body. Are your hips super tight? Do you have pelvic floor and the coordination that needs to work on? Do you just need breath work and down regulation? Do we just need to get stronger? I don't know. So I'm going to give you the tools that you can continue to explore. And through that, I know that you're going to feel something different. Mm. Well, I'm so excited for everybody to try out this app. We'll make sure to link it up in the show notes. Where can everybody find you? Doc Jen Fit on on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all, all things. <laughs> and we do we will give optimal 10. So if every, anyone wants to come in to Gen Health and try a course, a we have a pelvic floor plan, we have a mobility plan, we have all these different courses that you can get, or you know, Gen Health, just the free trial with all the plans that have that we have available for the membership. But also if you just go into Gen Health, so gen.health, it's not dot com or anything. You can literally search my Instagram for free. So mm-hmm. there's a whole explore section. If you put in back pain, it's going to pull up my videos that I've posted on back pain. If you put in hip mobility, it's going to pull up. All, and that is all free. And it's a way we created that because Instagram is so hard to find things. Yeah. You're like, I know you posted that, but I can't find it as I'm scrolling through. So a way to do that is just now you can type everything in and you don't have to worry about it. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's exciting. I'm going to check it out and I will make sure to. You said optimal 10. What yeah. is that? Yeah. Is that a code? That's $10 off. OK, there we go. <laughs> what are we doing with optimal <laughs> yeah, 10? Sorry. OK, $10, $10 off. off. You guys better take advantage of that. All right. So we're going to make sure everybody follows you. Thank you so much for coming all the way over here to be on the show. It was so fun to chat. Thank you for having me. And I laugh. appreciate it. Yeah. Yay. All right. Make sure to follow Jen. I promise you guys will feel like a million bucks after you do some of her stretches. You're going to feel incredible. Make sure to take a screenshot of this. Comment below what you learned and share it over on social media. Bye.